Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is paper one, question four. Um, I got cut off from the other video because I'd reached my 15 minutes limit. So just to pick up where we left off, we're talking about how the writer, we're evaluating how the writer creates this feeling of sympathy, um, makes us feel sorry for the old woman. And we left off just as I was about to start talking about this dialogue from Miss Havisham, from the old woman herself. And uh, she says, you are not afraid of a woman who has never seen the sun since she were born. And what I picked out from this is dialogue. So we've got the subject terminology there. And it evokes sympathy and pathos. So pathos is um, a technique that writers will use to um, get out of us as readers sort of feelings of pity. And she talks about how she's never seen this, how she has never seen the sun since Pip, the narrator, was born. So the sun has sort of connotations of life giving. She hasn't seen the sun. Um, and the implication is that she's not living her life, which makes the reader feel sorry for her. You know, she's been out of the sun, out of living. And that evokes that sense of sympathy for her, makes us feel sorry for her, because her life just seems to have stopped. And she's perhaps been trapped in this room for a long, long time, because as we've talked about, this passing of time is um, being um, described by the writer in lots of different ways. Okay, and then we move on, and she says, Do you know what I touch here? She said, laying her hands one upon the other on her left side. Yes, ma'am, what do I touch? Your heart broken. So I've highlighted this because now we get the idea that you know her heart has been broken and it's an exclamatory sentence okay so it's exclamatory sentences are sort of statements of fact if you like so she states her heart has been broken and it's got that exclamation mark at the end and so it conveys that emotion of um sadness it conveys emotion of sadness of having her heart broken, having her heart broken. And of course, we know from the rest of the extract that, you know, she, it looks as though she was jilted, that she was getting ready to get married and it never happened. So time stopped at that moment. Um, and so we feel sorry for her. That exclamatory sentence conveys that emotion of sadness. And this makes the reader feel sympathy for her at this point. You, you, you keep keep noticing that I keep going back to saying that it for you feels that's how it makes you feel sorry for the old woman. And then finally, she uttered the word with an eager look and with strong emphasis and with a weird smile that had kind of boast in it. Afterwards, she kept her hands there for a little while and slowly took them away as if they were heavy. And it's this line that the writer finishes on here. Um, so saying that her hands were heavy sort of implies heavy hands implies to me that she is implies to me that sadness and lack of energy like it's it's too much energy for her to keep her hands there and they feel heavy um, and so again <clears throat> there is a lifelessness lifelessness about her because of what she's gone through she seems depressed but there's also a hint of anger there as well she seems depressed which evokes a feeling of sadness for the reader okay so these are all my annotations. Now, you can see how much detail I've gone into in my annotations. And I've said to you before that when you do your annotations, if you really think through the things you're going to write up as your actual answer during this stage, then it should make the writing up you know, quite straightforward because you've got all your ideas here. I've obviously gone into a lot of detail in, in my annotations. You probably won't go into as much detail when you're doing your um, annotations in the real exam. Um, because I'm, you know, trying to show you the thinking process, the kind of things you need to look for and the things you need to say. But they are there, and so when I come to write my answer, it should be more straightforward. So let's just have a quick look back at the question. 
the bullet points. So write about your own impressions of the old woman, Miss Havisham. I've, I've done that in my annotations. Um, I've talked about her being in this disheveled state. Um, everything is messy around her and this idea of um, her decaying and getting old and this idea of lots of time passing. Um, and then at the end, this idea of her being out of the sun, suggesting that she's not living her life anymore, and the heavy hands, and the idea of that linking to suggesting a, a lifelessness about her, a sadness about her, like there's no energy, it's too much energy to, for her to, to have her hands lifted because of the things that she's gone through. So yeah, tick, done that, done that bullet point. Evaluate how the writer arises sympathy for her, I've done that all the way through. So she seems depressed, which evokes a feeling of sadness. Some highlighting going over here. <clears throat> um, conveys the emotion of sadness. This makes us feel sympathy for her. All the way through. She hasn't seen the sun. The implication is she's not living a life, which makes the reader feel sorry for her. So all the way through, I've got that evaluation. And support your opinions with quotations from the text. Everything I've said is based on a quotation in the text. So I can use those um, to support my answer. Okay. So... That's uh, paper one question four. You spend about 20 minutes on it. It's quite neat because it's a 20 mark question, so you should be able to remember that quite easily, just 20 minutes on that one. Um, yeah, and that's it. And so what I might suggest you do is, as part of your revision, have a look at some of these phrases, have a look at the things I've written, and you could have a go at writing up that answer yourself so you get the feel of writing up um, an answer for paper one question four.